we're going to kind of round things out with ABP7. And, you know, the reason why I had an ABP7 in here is because your immune cells and the white blood cells specifically are so hyper-connected to your gut. And so when we treat like chronic uh, autoimmunity, chronic inflammation, we're always looking at the immune cells and your thymus gland has uh, different thymulins that it secretes. There's seven core thymulins. One of those is ABP7 and it behaves a lot like thymus and beta-4. And we'll be talking about thymus and beta-4 in additional master classes, but these can almost be interchanged. But the difference is ABP7 is like adding thymus and alpha-1 and thymus and beta-4 together. And so if you think about what thymus and alpha one is, um, it, it is, uh, uh, it received, uh, FDA approval to treat like, um, different types of autoimmune conditions. It's been studied with MS, um, uh, HIV patients, uh, have seen, a, uh, an improvement in immune function with thymus and alpha one. And then you think thymus and beta four and it's regenerative it stimulates the release of stem cells in the body. Um, it retrains the, the white blood cells. But when you combine those two activities, you get this supercharged peptide that can help override the immune system. And so um, one of the, the things I put in here is we use ABP seven for a short lived long haul. So um, Dan, you get that uh, short lived long haul. Uh, how many patients do you see that have some kind of long haul from, the bidster a lot we've seen we've seen quite a few that's crazy isn't it yeah and and there's different markers that show up in the blood but um when we get them on this abp7 thymulin what you'll find is it harmonizes the immune system the endocrine system and the central nervous system and so it works in all types of chronic infections because if you think about what the job is of your white blood cells, like your neutrophils are going to be more selective uh, when there's a bacterial infection in your body, your lymphocytes are going to be a little more primed when it comes to viral invasions. Your monocytes are going to be elevated if you're recovering from an infection or if there's maybe some type of low grade long lasting infection or even if there's parasites in your body. Uh, the eosinophils are going to be there when there's some type of uh, allergic reaction or histamine response. And then basophils are kind of there if there's a general low-grade long-term infection. Anything selective on basophils that you found, like as far as pathogens go? You know, typically with uh, just histamines and some types of pathogens, nothing, you know, there's not a whole lot of highly detailed um, information out there on the basophils, you know, and sometimes it can be a, an indicator of some type of malignancy sometimes. So, yeah. well, Dan, if it makes you feel any better, every time I go through the wet blood cells, I think of your, um, acronym. Oh yeah. Nice. Never, never let mom eat bananas. So <laughs> never. They're, they're, they're <laughs> she cannot eat bananas. Yeah, not at all. But yeah, the bananas, the basophils are kind of the last one and they're the lowest quantity of white blood cells. So um, seems like there's probably, I bet if we dug in, we could find some fascinating things on basophils. And maybe in, in our immune masterclass, you guys will have a little treat and we'll share with you some breakthroughs in basophils, the basophil breakthroughs. Uh, but in, in ABP7, if you think of our thymus gland, it involutes as we age. And so Anytime you can use thymulins, and by the way, there's a bioregulator called thymulin that you can utilize, but then you can use ABP7 to trigger uh, a nice upregulation of, um, you know, different white blood cell activity. And so um, ABP7, uh, it helps restore the balance in a cytokine storm, calms autoimmune markers, IL-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and then it also re requires less energy when your immune system is um, attacking you in an autoimmune condition. And then it does seem to help stimulate the uh, reversal of an aged thymus gland. So, um, so ABP7 is phenomenal. Once again, the way you think about this one is uh, anytime you've had a chronic infection, your white blood cells are going to be weakened and your overall defense systems are going to be lower, especially if you have low white blood cells or even high white blood cells, this would be the time to use it. 
And then if you also have um, issues in the body where you're not recovering, so this is thymosin alpha one, thymosin beta four in, uh, in the same sequence. Um, and it's just a phenomenal, amazing peptide. And then, um, if you had to choose your top three amazing insights, um, uh, from today, what would, what would they be? Well, I'm, I'm happy to announce that my rat, mice, fruit fly and monkey population, I think their longevity is going to be way better. Um, so I'm excited. Nope. Don't forget your rabbits. Remember your rabbits with the Achilles tendonitis. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I I can't I wait to treat the rodents. Yes, right. <laughs> we got so many tools. Yeah, they keep the they make the world go round. Um, that's a little <laughs> fuzzy bastards. Um, I'd say big ones. Um, the biofilm and SIBO effect of LL thirty seven. Mm. Um, I love that. I mean, I wasn't familiar with that that pathway um the next one probably be the superoxide and the glutathione pathway activation um from epitalin like that is that's good to know i mean i think that's a good reason to use that as a, a starting um place to get going with a lot of the different peptides and then i'd say You know, I still, I still love BPC, you know, and every yeah. time we talk or you do a presentation, there's something else about BPC that, you know, I just, you know, makes me go, man, that's, that's the one to be using, you know, it's just such a powerful, such a powerful peptide. So those would be my three. Those are my top takeaways. Yeah, I love it. I think mine was, um, you know, the butyric acid, I mentioned this earlier, but um, butyric acid and LL37 being combined, um, that was a little gem because, you know, we can we can build up butyric acid and butyrate in the body. And so it's like, cool, if they have this synergistic relationship. Um, and then um, also, I love the insights on the uric acid um, that you'd mentioned, 60% of it. Uh, coming from the gut. And so that just goes back to, you know, you and I, we did the uh, research on the metal element and, you know, looking at how the lungs and the large intestine are connected. Dan and I are always going into kind of, you know, text that was written 2,500 years ago and seeing how the science now supports some of the uh, Eastern philosophies of, of health. Um, and it's coming to fruition now, but, uh, but that was fascinating because that was just one more piece of evidence on how, uh, you know, correct they, they really had it. And then I, I also just, um, I always appreciate your, your insights on, um, you know, just, just like the probiotics, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, thinking about the fungi, because I don't talk about that enough, but you brought up the Saccharomyces boulardii and I was like, you know, what? I, I need to be using that in my practice more frequently because it's, it, it's so powerful. So, uh, Dan, it's, it's been awesome. I really appreciate it the time we've been able to spend together and nerding out. Awesome to have you on here, Jennifer. Um, contraindications for ABP7. Um, you know, I guess the contraindications for ABP7, um, uh, you know, would, would possibly be um, a high dose in a case like yours, because I know your medical history, I would, you know, we dose it smaller, but really no other contraindications I haven't seen anything because thymosin alpha one can even be used. It helps with cancer, especially with patients who are undergoing chemotherapy. It makes the chemotherapy more selective and it doesn't destroy the white blood cells like it would without thymosin alpha one. And then, but thymosin beta four can be angiogenic. And so there, there might be a little con contraindication there, but not that I've seen. So. Reagan, I was going to, I forgot to add this one of the, cause we've been doing a lot of the RGCC and, we have quite a few um, patients with malignancy and mm. epitalin for that because it it uh, inhibits um, tumor genesis and malignancies. Yes. Yeah. Um, and how are you liking that testing? Is it, um, I mean, that's like so selective. That's great. Yeah, it's crazy. We got, we have this, we had this amazing, we've had a couple amazing cases, but we have a, we have a patient who uh, has triple negative stage four breast cancer. It was given a uh, 14% uh, 
you know, uh, prognosis of survival. And she's working with the Mayo Clinic. She was in a clinical trial and uh, uh, it's over 600 women with the same type of cancer. And right now she's the only one in remission. Wow. Yeah. So it's been, it's been we're getting some really, it, it's been really cool and giving people that uh, additional level of uh, support and, you know, some targeted approaches specific to all the genetics that are and all the, the testing that comes out of, you know, their specific cancer. Hey everybody, Reagan Archbald here. I hope you enjoyed the Go Wellness show and maybe learned a couple things you could apply to your practice. If you're a healthcare entrepreneur who wants to work in an academic think tank with like-minded humans who are just like you, looking to provide better service, better quality of care for your patients, reach us at info at and we're happy to do a free practice analysis for you.